This is a ACT math test taking tip review guide. It's not meant to be comprehensive. It just gives you a, a bunch of the highlights of what you'll see on the exam. I start off with some uh, general tips up here. And what you want to think about when you're taking the test is to keep moving. It's 60 questions in 60 minutes. And that's not a lot of time. So you want to try and answer the ones you know quickly and spend the time where you have to. If you have a four minute problem, great. You just need to save three minutes on other problems, which is very doable if you know what you're doing in the math. Um, a lot of people work from the answers forward. So if they can eliminate choices quickly, they will. So if they've got an A, B, C, D, they, well, I know it's not D and B. I can work on A. It's not a bad strategy. It can lead you wrong, but it works more often than not. Uh, you can work backwards too if you really aren't sure how the problem works or asking a complicated fraction problem and the first answer is 36 you can take that and put it back into the problem see if it works and it'll it'll start narrowing down your choices especially if it's some simple math never leave blank answers a lot of people are told leave it blank and then come back to it later your majority of your students are not going to be able to finish the act math so you want to guess the middle answer um, and by middle i mean if there's five you want to guess c if there's this, you want to guess H. So whatever the answer is in the middle. That's uh, the most common answer on the ACT for whatever reason. Circle the answer in, pardon me, circle the question in the question booklet. Answer the middle answer and then move on. And if you have time, you can come back and start tackling them one at a time. Uh, most people I talk to actually do come back and get to them, but they only get to about half of them. So you definitely want an answer. Plus, you don't want to leave a blank in case you forget that you left it blank and you start filling in the wrong numbers for the wrong answers. Uh, those are general test taking tips. This is math specific tips. Uh, when in doubt, draw a picture. If they say a certain triangles, blah, 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 draw a triangle. Uh, draw a coordinate plane and draw a good one. Okay. You can even dot in the lines and it really is worth the time to just draw a very good coordinate plane. You'll find that will solve most of your problems. Uh, label all your points. So if you're Got a point here, and it's called point A, and it's at 4, comma 3. Label it, and then you'll have it, and you won't forget what you did or what point that was, and it'll save you time later later on. If you need to plug in a number to guess, it says, you know, a certain person's age. Well, let me guess mine. Go for it. Use, you know, 14, 15, 16. 10 is a great number to use. Do not use these numbers. 1 is an identity. 2 and 4 are squares and square roots of each other, so it's kind of tricky when you do that. So we're going to jump right into a fairly challenging subject, but one that pops up at least two to four questions on the ACT. It's a 30-60-90 triangle, and it's actually fairly important in trigonometry to understand it. The triangle is called 30-60-90 because it's 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and the sides always line up in a certain way. So this is what I call the short side. It's the smallest side. And let's say it was 2. It's across from 30 degrees. That's what makes it the short side. Across from 60 is what I call the long side. And if this is 2, you just multiply it by root 3. So it would be 2 root 3. And this is called the hypotenuse. So if this was 2, this would be 4. You just double it. So to give you another example, And they'll usually just put the 1 in there and let you figure out that that means this is 60. If this was 8, this would be 4, and this would be 4 root 3. The tricky one is when they give you the long side and you have to divide by root 3, but it's still very doable. Uh, a 45, 45, 90 triangle is actually very easy to do also. If you have two on one side, and they have to say it's 45, and two on this side, this will be two root two. So the two sides are the same, and then multiply by root two to get the hypotenuse. A typical problem you might see would look something like this.
they'll say, and they'll put letters on that, but this side is 7 root 3, what's x? And what they want you to do is say, well, if this is 7 root 3, that makes this 7. That makes this 14. Also makes this 14, but I don't really care. Therefore, x is 14 root 2. And that's it. 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles are tricky. Uh, if you find some old problems, definitely recommend it. You'll get, again, two to four problems on the ACT like that. Just so you're aware, if you see the words equilateral triangle with an altitude, equilateral has 60, 60, and 60. I'm not going to draw it in. And they'll say with a altitude, which forms a right angle, you've just made two 30, 60, 90 triangles. And they'll probably ask you a question that will make use of that. Other things on the ACT, parallel lines. See this all the time, and it is actually one of the easier ones. Vertical angles, also see this fairly often. Parallel lines, they'll probably tell you, but they might put the little arrows on there indicating they're parallel. And if you have one angle, you know the rest. 40 degrees, 40 degrees. 40 degrees, and then 140 degrees plus 40 is 180, so on and so on. So the type of problem you would probably see is something like this. These are parallel lines. This is 40 degrees, this is 2x, what's x? Well, you'd have to say this is 40, therefore this is 40, 40 plus 2x, equals 180, 2x equals 140, x equals 70. Make sure you read the question. Sometimes I'll say, what is this angle over here or something like that in terms of x or something. So just read it. You'll be fine. For vertical angles, pretty easy. You just know that if this is 20, this is 20, and that would make this 160. Again, 160 plus 20 equals 180. So a typical problem you might see actually would add in what we're going to talk about in a few minutes. We'll say this is 20 degrees and this is 30 degrees, 80 degrees. What is the value of Y? Well, you're supposed to look at this and say, oh, by vertical angles, I know it's also here. That's 20 degrees. 2080 is 100. Inside of triangle is 180. So 100 and 80 minus 100 is y equals 80 degrees. Very typical problem. I'll talk about the inside of a triangle in a minute. Polygon interior, the one you see the most is the triangle. And you should know that they add up. Say this is 60 degrees, this is 80 degrees, this would be 40 degrees. 40 plus 60 plus 80 equals 180 degrees. And the reason you want to know that, which most of you probably did, if they give you a more complicated shape, there's a nice little formula. Remember that. I don't bother. I just draw the triangles real quick. I've just made three triangles. That means there is 3 times 180. 540 degrees. Done. So then you can solve it. They'll say, well, what is each angle if they're all congruent? Things like that. So moving on. Congruent triangles. You'll get a problem looks something like this. They might tell you they're parallel lines. Or they might just say angle A and angle E are congruent. Which other sides are congruent? Well, what you have to do is recognize that, and they'll actually say uh, this side and this side are congruent. These are vertical angles. We're looking at, excuse me, let's make it this side and this side. Uh, angle, side, angle. You don't need to know any of that from geometry. Just know that they're going to be congruent. And what you want to do is redraw the triangles. So draw one of them exactly the same. That'll be the A, B, C, and then draw the other one so that it looks a lot like it. And we're going to have to spin this. So 
So we know that C is on top because they're both at the same spot. D got spun all the way around down to here. And E got spun around here. And E, C were congruent and with A, C. So now you have two triangles. You can match them up. You can say angle B is congruent to angle D. You can say C, D is congruent to C, B. Doesn't matter. So once you line them up, you're good. You do not have to worry about checking for congruency. They'll be congruent. They very rarely set up a problem with none of the above. They're really trying to see if you know how to line up the triangles and that they're congruent. And if you knew angle side angle, great, but you really didn't need to. You know they're going to be congruent. Just line up the parts and redrawing, redraw them so you have two triangles lying next to each other. That's it for this video. Next video will kick off at this point. Good luck.